Yeah, what's poppin' guys? Sizzle here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I install all my mods, how you can install all my mods, you know, what all my mods are uh, for Team Fortress 2. First off, I just want to show up like a stock TF2 boot. It's, it's gonna be like a two minute demo, maybe not a full two minutes, hopefully. It should be like 10 seconds. Uh, first off, main screen, we got ads for, for buying shit. We got an untoggleable friends list. We go to the loadout screen. It's all right. It works. We can look around. Characters look fine. Go to the backpack. You gotta click around like this to get around. Kind of annoying. Uh, and then in game, let me just show you the most egregious stuff in stock TF2 that some of the mods I use fix. So you can see, first off, we gotta hit the skip movie thing every time. It's just an extra button you have to click. Then second off, loadout screen works fine. It's all right. Uh, but when I shoot this weapon and I reload it, the original, you can see soldier has no hands. They're just gone. I didn't mob them out or anything. They just disappear with the right settings. Uh, and these are stock TF2 settings, things you just do in the base game. Right? They're saved in the Steam Cloud, that's why my FOB is like this. It's just saved in the Steam Cloud. Uh, second off, on Medic, when I go to heal people, I mean, just look at my arms, you can see directly in the Medic's arms. That's not great. And worst of all, by far the worst of all, on Engineer or, or Scout, if you got the Luger Morph and you got to inspect, uh, what is Engineer holding in his left hand? There's no clip or mag or whatever on, on the Luger Morph in TF2. They deleted it, like, five years ago and never brought it back. Like, when you reload, he just slaps the pistol and it magically gets ammo back. Let me also swap the capture mode to window capture so you can see a little bit better. White bar on the bottom because I'm just in raw windowed mode right now. That part of the screen isn't being used. But, yeah. Alright. Luger Morph, even on Scout, he just holds up nothing, uses nothing. Uh, but then when you go to, you know, the stock pistol or anything like it, it just, it works. He's got it. He's got it there. They just deleted it for the Luger Morph for some reason, but I love using the Luger Morph, so that's like a real problem for me. Anyway, now off to the installation process for my mods that fix all this. Uh, first off, I want to mention, if you are on Linux or Mac OS, you have a different set of instructions to follow. They're linked in the uh, link in the description. I, I have like a little written thing here you can just follow along. Should be really simple, especially if you're on one of those systems you're used to doing stuff like that. Just want to let you guys know it works for you too. Uh, but for everyone on Windows, the, you know, the pe most of the people watching this video, this is all you have to do. So first off, you have to get Java 17 or higher, like it says here. Uh, just go right up to here and hit latest release. It'll give you like an exe file or whatever. You run it, you install Java, you come back here. Once you have Java installed, go to the releases tab right here uh, and use whatever says latest on it. Right now, there's only one version, so there's you know, it's the only thing that says latest on it. Eventually, there'll be more than one version. I do swap mods occasionally, and this is the most up-to-date thing of the mods I use because I install my mods through here. I generally uh, have to ask all the different people that make the mods if it's okay to do. Uh, every single mod included, by the way, is listed down here in the main page. I got permission from every single one of these people to include their mods in this way and like redistribute them and stuff. So they're all really cool people. Uh, either way, you get two options here. You have either sizzletf2.zip, which is all my mods except for my custom HUD, and then sizzletf2 and HUD. So for those looking just to get my custom HUD and nothing else, there's going to be a separate video on that. Uh, it's a really simple process. It'll be much quicker than what I'm about to do here, but this is also a quick process. So it's not that bad. Uh, either way, I want all my mods in my HUD, so I'm going to do Sizzle TF2 in HUD. I just want to let you know, if you have your own custom HUD or you want to use the stock HUD, this option still exists. Uh, anyway, Sizzle TF2 and HUD. There we go. Uh, it's just going to install it real quick. should take a little bit longer for you guys. I just have really good internet at the moment. Uh, I'm going to drag it down to the desktop so you guys have an easier time seeing it. All you got to do, right-click, unzip. Uh, in my case, I'm using 7-zip. You can use whatever. Like WinRAR works just fine for that, and then extract the file. While that's going on, uh, let's do the next part of the process. Just going back to the main page. This will be linked in the description. Grab exec preloader from here, copy it, go onto Steam, Team Fortress 2, right click, properties, launch options, paste that in, exec preloader. Then go to installed files, hit browse. It'll pop up with something like this. Uh, now that our other thing is done extracting, double click that to open that up, and it'll open up something like this. You drag all this stuff in to the main TFT folder, just like that. And then from here, uh, if you have Java installed, you can double click quick precache auto dot bat. Uh, by default, Windows hides the file extension, so either turn those on to see that, or just click the one that says quick precache auto. There should only be one file with that name. 
And then, yeah, it takes like a fraction of a second. You just press any key when it's done, which says press any key to continue. And from here, all we have to do is with, with the launch option there and the files there, we boot the game and it should crash. It's expected to crash on some systems for some reason. Like some of the people I've had install this didn't have their game crash. And it confuses me. If the game doesn't crash for you, you won't have to do this next step uh, of basically undoing that command. <laughs> like if it works for you, don't undo it. For me, it crashes. For most people, it crashes. But I just want to let you know if it doesn't crash, that's actually also normal. It's very weird stuff. Either way, once it crashes, we're going to right-click properties again, delete exec preloader, and from here, you're technically good to run the game, but I also have some launch options I like to use, and they're a little bit down here in the warning section. You just grab this big line right here, copy that, go to launch options, paste it in. I'll go over real quick what they are. Uh, no bid skips the video at the start. Like You can just delete any one of these if you want one of these on. But no vid uh, just skips the video at the start where you have to like press with the guy with the valve on his head. It just gets rid of it. No joy disables controller support. No steam controller disables steam controller support. Uh, if you don't use a controller in TF2, this actually uses up a, a, a decent amount of resources. It's worth disabling if you don't use them. If you do use them, obviously don't have these on. <laughs> uh, and then Particles 1, pre-cache pre font cars. Uh, I think this stuff just like download some stuff sets some stuff up before you actually launch the game so that the game just runs smoother by default and the stuff all at the end here is borderless windowed right windowed no border makes it borderless windowed w and h are the width and height of the window uh if anyone is using a 1080p monitor those are the default values i've included since i made this i went from a 1080p monitor to a 2k monitor so mine that's actually 2560 by 1440 uh, make this whatever the dimensions of your monitor are and uh, yeah, with all that out of the way, now when we, we go on the Steam, we hit play, we're good. It's all installed. That was the entire installation process. Uh, you can be happy, do what you want. Uh, the only things I want to mention are one, let me go back to display capture real quick. One, uh, if any of this, if you're on like a lower end system, you probably want to actually configure a lot of these mods individually. Uh, in which case, they're all linked here on the repo. You can download them one by one, add in each file individually, and kind of just put them in the same place that you see where this stuff gets put. Uh, number two, this will only ever be optimized for my system. I'm not going to make a config of this like with, with master config low or something. Uh, you'll have to do that yourself because this is just my setup. I'm not trying to make this for everyone. The HUD, like Sizzle HUD, is made for everyone, right? That will be optimized for every system. That'll that'll be fine. But all the mods and stuff I use, I just use on my own. I just figured I might as well have them here just, just in case people ask so that they can see what I use, maybe download it if they want. Uh, so yeah, those are just some warnings I wanted to put in the way. That being said, let's go back into TF2. And you can see we got our high quality uh, character here. The background has an animated background. The guy who did the anime background for normal TF2, and he also now made one for Halloween because Halloween came up, said that when the Christmas update comes out, he's going to make one for Christmas as well. So during Christmas, I'm going to update my set of mods again to include that. So you can look forward to that, I guess. <laughs> I know I actually am. Uh, but you can see like the fog moon in the background is super nice. The, the stuff here is higher quality. We have a toggleable friends list. We can turn it on and off at will. We have a dedicated console button, items and shopper, one tab, options and advanced options are one tab. Uh, if we go into items, we have higher quality character things in the loadout screen here, which looks super nice in my opinion. When you actually go to them, we have a nice uh, different background, which I think looks lighter than stock. We can hold shift to move the character around. You can hold right click to uh, like zoom in and out. And if you hold control, you can change the lighting. It's all pretty cool stuff. It looks really nice in the background, in my opinion. And you also have an easy way to swap between the classes here on the left, just much quicker. It's one less click every time to go between the classes. Uh, Backpack-wise, we have arrows on the side here now, and you can also just press A or D to go between them real quick, which is also just you know, mildly convenient. Uh, as for the other buttons down here, we have a few nice options, which I'll go over when we hop in game and I show off you know, some of what we got going on here. All right, so you can see now that we're loaded in, we have a transparent background when we load in. There's no movie to skip. It goes straight to the team select, which is stock TF2 because they just did it well. Uh, we click on whatever team we want to click on. 
on the loadout screen, we have a nice transparent background. The character is in like a nice pose, nice and visual, got a little animation going. You can also left click to drag him around on the select screen, which is kind of fun, kind of goofy. Also, when you hold tab, it's split up in a, a way that lets you see the game more as you're holding tab, which is great in my opinion. The chat's in the top left. Uh, I have captions in the bottom left, like when you damage yourself and stuff and other people damage themselves. They're broken right now because Valve broke captions with the Halloween update. I'm just hoping they fix them after the Halloween update. Uh, if they don't, I will put out a patch for that. By the time this video is up, that patch will either be applied or not be applied. Because I know how I could fix it. It's just a lot of work. And if Valve just actually fixes the thing they broke, uh, then I won't have to do all that work, which would be great. Either way, you can also move the guy. When you right-click, you can like click on different people to see their stats and stuff. You can dr drag the characters around on here as well, which is pretty neat. Uh, there's only one or two other HUDs you can even do this in. It's a very unique feature. Uh, and then, yeah, animation fixes. You can see Soldier now has hands. It's a crazy patch. Uh, his left hand reloads his, his original. It's great. There's custom animations on everyone except the sniper because Valve actually did a really good job with the sniper animations, but every other class there was some kind of problem with the sock animations or uh, someone did the custom animations cooler. But sniper, they just did an amazing job. This is just stock. Uh, it's great. Uh, medic, there's still a problem. Even with mods, I couldn't find a mod to fully fix medic, but you can see his arms are fully there now. Like you look in the bottom right, he has arms. But when I go heal someone, you look in the middle of my screen, he has like a little sleeve that pops up in the middle. And I talked to the guy that made the mod and basically, uh, no one knows how to really fix that. <laughs> Maybe someone will someday, at which point I will gladly update to that. But this is the closest I've gotten to a fix for that, so I'm, I'm happy with it as it is. I barely play Medic to begin with, so that's fine by me. But more importantly, the Luger Morph. I'll look at, oh, first off, the animation's different, but second off, oh, the mag is there. The engineer pushes up a mag or clip or whatever into the gun. It's there. It, it exists. It's real. L is real. 2024. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, custom animations on a bunch of different stuff. You know, like if you use the inspect animation on the shotgun here, it strums like a guitar. It's a pretty cool little thing. The soldier, if you inspect the the pickaxe and shovels, you've got some like funny stuff he does with it. Hits his head. Has sound effects and everything. It's great. It's great stuff. Yeah, a bunch of different custom animations, make everything more bouncy, more cartoonish, which is exactly how I like it. Uh, the HUD's got obviously tons of custom elements going on, but there's way too many of them to count. I can't go over all of them in this video, but I made a shitload of changes. I modified a, an existing HUD with permission from the people uh, who made it, and me, along with Technitory, uh, spent a long, 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 long time getting everything exactly how I wanted it, and I'm really happy with the end result. So yeah, uh... Like I said, link to get the HUD on its own will be in the description. And that's how you install all these mods. Uh, Post-editing or post-recording sizzle here. I was doing a little clip at the end. Forgot to mention, there's also some cool fixes in here. Uh, first up, demo UI for comp players. You guys will know this loads demo files. It's great for them. For everyone else, though, there's some cool stuff here. Fix sound. If you ever have a bug where you hear like a critical sound effect in your ear the entire time, just click this button and it fixes the sound. It, it fixes the, the problems with sound. There's tons of problems that can just pop up occasionally. This fixes all of them. Uh, fix invisible players, same type of thing. Sometimes people just turn invisible. It's really rare. For me, it happens about one in every one to 200 matches, but it does happen and clicking this will fix it. Uh, the one that's really common though is the demo man shield. When you just charge around with this thing, I swear to God, half the time it just disappears. Like you see it's on my left arm there. Sometimes it's just floating off on the void somewhere and you have nothing on your arm. Uh, and this button in the corner here will fix it. Right? Uh, what it does is it toggles VR mode. So first it toggles it on. And then if you want to go back to normal mode and this is actually what fixes it, you just do that. Right, Toggle it on and off. It's also cool just to have access to VR mode, especially if you're a heavy player. Because normally heavy looks like this. It's like cool and whatever. It's, it's all right. But you turn on VR mode, like your gun bounces around, you're like dodging left and right. It's like it's like a whole different game. It's really fucking cool. Heavy particularly looks good with VR mode. But every character looks pretty solid in one way or another. It's just cool to have access to a toggle for that. And it also happens to fix the demo man shield whenever it just bugs the fuck out. But yeah, uh, that's actually all there is to this. Hope you all enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns in the comments below. I'll try to answer them if I happen to see your comment and happen to know a solution, but no guarantees that I can respond to everything. Uh, and yeah, with that being said, hope you enjoy, hope you enjoy the mods. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.